three quarters of a million bees hoping to grow 30,000 pounds of blueberries. Good morning, Maine. So excited to be here. It's so refreshing. It feels so remote. Yeah. Oh wow, look at this rocky field. It's beautiful. So tell us, Beauty, where are we going today? It's very special. We are going to Highlands wow. Blueberry Farm and Highlands Organic. So I am really excited. Yay! You, you excited about that? Yay! Now are y'all more excited about Yay. The tea, the blueberry tea, yeah. or are you more excited about seeing them set out the bees? Yeah. yeah. We came on a good, day. yeah. That wasn't a yes or no question. <laughs> we came on an amazing day to this Yay. blueberry farm. They're getting their bees today. Highland Blueberry Farm. And then the mosquitoes come out. <laughs> I think we just came into blueberry paradise. Look at this. I think we're going to have to get some of this because this is blue smoothie powder. <laughs> and that's good for us because we don't necessarily have the freezer space to keep blueberries. But then we can add this to our smoothies. And the kids, can they love blueberries in their smoothies. Oh man, it's, we're just going to stock up. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be excited. I am going to get some frozen blueberries to maybe put in pancakes cakes. And well, you should. Like yeah, I mean, I have Well, I mean, frozen. I'm here. That's right. You might as well get some blueberries. <laughs> and we're only here once. Uh, What's your name? Teresa Gaffney. Okay. My husband, Tom, and I own Highland Blueberry Farm and Highland Organics. So. Nice. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I got to ask, are you wearing a blue shirt on purpose? Is this part of the uh, brand? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just coincidence? <laughs> Not a coincidence. <laughs> good luck, good luck. This is perfect. Okay. <laughs> this is our blueberry field. Um, and down here is where all the blueberry is going to be. So there's a difference between high bush and low bush. High bush, the blueberry plants are way up here. Low bush, all of our fruit yeah. is down here. So this is where the plants are. As you can see, there's some, bl the buds are just starting to come out. So they're not all the way out. We'll take a walk up there and you'll get to see some bigger ones. The blueberry oh. fields um, blueberry field. is where the fields are going to um, uh, open up the blossoms and the bees, the pollinators are gonna start really working it. We have about, in the state of Maine, um, over 200 pollinated pollinators. And so we really wanna try to support the pollinators because no bees, no blueberries. And so it's really important that we support the bees, the pollinators through their life cycles. And they need three things. Do you guys know what those three things might be? Water. Water, one of them. A house. A house. And, and flowers. Food? And food. Pollen. That's exactly right. So as long as we provide um, shelter, water, and food for bees through their life cycle, they'll be really happy and they'll live here forever and ever, we hope. So that's our goal. Now, I'll be honest, I expected to see rows of blueberries. Yeah. But this is a field of blueberries. This is a field. This is what the low wild mane, very small fruit, very sweet. Um, okay. This is how this grows. The high bush is going to be the rows where people are managing okay. those. Um, you don't manage we these? We don't plant these. these. Oh, you didn't plant these? No, this is naturally here. It's been here for a what? long, long time. My job is to keep the field, uh, the forest out of the field. How do you do that? Well, here's Reg. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a Reg in their Everybody life. needs a Reg. <laughs> I'm in forest management. <laughs> <laughs> he is forest management in the blueberry field. And so he will go and cut the trees, the bushes, and he will also pull up any weeds that we don't want in there. Sometimes we have sweet fern that grow in the field. Sweet fern's really a great plant. Love to put it all over my skin. It smells really good. It keeps the bugs off of me. 
but I don't want sweet fern growing with my blueberries. Okay. Are there any other weeds that you go in and look for and pull? Uh, any of the roses or the, um, we have another one, uh, the blackberries that will ground cover it. And so we want to pull those out. Um, any of the vines that kind of cover over a field. We became certified organic by Mofka in 2002. So I began transitioning when I took over the management of the field in 99, I began transitioning it to organic. We um, really try to encourage the pollinators. So I'll have strips through the field where pollinating plants can come up. In here where my beehives are, I have raspberries. I also have roses. I have milkweed that grow up in there. So I have lots of things that are growing all around um, to be able to feed the bees. So okay. that's my goal. What I do is I'm not using any um, herbicides, okay. pesticides, or um, fungicides. And okay. so I'm not spraying any chemicals on it whatsoever. We hand weed our fields. High five. High five. <laughs> she looks at me like, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Nobody's giving you a high five. You deserve more I high fives. More Come high on fives. now. You need more high fives in your life and, for what you're doing. And to be able to say that we are cons we have been organically certified since 2002 with no breaks, that is a big blue deal. And that's a big blue deal. And people should be asking that question of any of your blueberry growers. Mm. How long have you been certified organic? How, 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 how long? should it be what is it well I mean people it takes three years to transition to organic mm -hmm. um, sadly we have people that will be organic for a minute and when they don't want to pull the weeds by hand they'll have another field ready to go into certification okay. and then they'll spray the field with chemicals yeah. and so they're it's what we call flipping fields and we we do not engage in that practice so. how many acres Yay. of wild blueberries do you have I have 25 acres and then I harvest 12 every year. How long does it take Reg to weed all that? Um, he starts as soon as we can get out in the field like he's already been out so from May until uh, October. He's he'll full time work the field. weed puller? He is part time weed puller. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those are, those are going to be blueberries, those, those flowers there. If the bees hit them and as the bees hit them then and the more hits it gets the bigger the fruit will be for those that don't know tell everyone what the bees do what you mean by hit them yeah so we have honeybees we have main native pollinators and we have bumblebees and so every time you have a pollinator come up and grab some of the pollen and the nectar from the bell then it is transferring whatever may be on its body as far as pollen and so it that is how um, the the pollens will come together and they'll create the fruit so so we the more hits it gets the more pollen uh, up from other flowers that it gets the bigger that fruits gonna be nice yeah I know the black flies are fun aren't they and all of these are gonna be blueberries pretty soon Come at the end of July, 1st of August, we'll start harvesting the blueberries out of this field. And Reg has this big machine, and he'll take that machine and he'll walk right through the field, and it will rake all the fruit right out of the field and into boxes. And then he'll bring those boxes over to the factory, and then they'll wash them up and freeze them for us. That's what our goal is, to do to about two to 4,000 pounds an acre. And you can do that organically. Nice. I mean, it's, you, you I, don't need to spray. I see that you probably process, dehydrate, or whatever, turn it into tea, most of it. Right? Yeah. Do you do any fresh? Exactly. No, don't okay. do any fresh. Have the frozen available for people. We sell those at the market. Yeah. Um, but really, most of our blueberries go right into our blueberry tea yeah. or our pureed dehydrated blueberry fruit. You add value and yep. then you have something that lasts all year long. That's right. So you have a steady Absolutely. income. Yeah, this has gone from a four week business to a year round business Good now you. with the value added. So it's really, and we had to think outside the box. Blueberry jam's been done really well by a lot of great people. Um, you know, on all the other blueberry products, the frozen blueberries and and so doing the tea, um, it, 
it, it really requires just two things to make our blueberry tea. First, it's the blueberry fruit that we puree and dehydrate. And second, it is the blueberry leaves. We actually harvest these blueberry leaves in the fall when they turn a crimson red after the fruiting season. And we hand harvest those red leaves, those crimson red leaves, because the leaves have more anthocyanins or antioxidants than the blueberry fruit. So by putting the two together, it makes a wonderful, yummy tasting blueberry tea that's really super high in antioxidants, which is why people drink it. This one plant is probably going to have about 40 berries on it. Wow. To give you guys an idea, one plant, 40 berries. Wow. Yeah. Millions of plants with 40 berries. Yeah. 30,000 pounds of blueberries from this acreage this what? year. What? Reg gonna, has done an you're incredible... Low. Your guess is low. Uh, my guess is low. <laughs> okay, guess, Reg. How many thousands of pounds of blueberries off this field? I'm hoping for 40,000 pounds. 40,000 pounds off this blueberry I'll field. It. I'll take it. Yeah. 40,000. I and you know and again, it's all the hard work that Reg has put into mm -hmm. it. All the hard work that we have done to really help um, encourage pollinators here on this property. Peter Cowan the bee whisperer. Hey Peter. Hello. And Peter's nice going, here buddy. to okay, good. bring us some pollinating bees and yep. it's a beautiful day for that. Perfect so. day for it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good. We're gonna set some bees out and gonna put him in a bee suit so he can help out. I don't know how that way you can get as close as you want. Yeah, cool. And I think what the arrangement is you get honey and she gets fruit. That's, well, that's the in trade? Effect, in effect, yes. That's okay. Right. It's a that's great right. arrangement. That's right. That's right. <laughs> nice. Probably put them facing that way and this way. Yep. Rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. A, right? That's right. Yep. That's right. That's it. So east, west. So two hives will go this direction and two hives will go that direction. Let me ask you, since we know that they have a flight pattern mm -hmm. and the doors right there, do you think that'll be? Shouldn't be an issue. They will tend to fly, fly up, up and. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped. Who you is You don't recognize that? me? It's just me. It's just it's me. Just Papa. Just me. Me no Papa. <laughs> Papa's in a bee suit. Look at him. I'm in a bee suit. What do you think about this? So we're just going to take them. I will take the uh, screen off the entrance to let them go. And they'll be out working within minutes. Um, but what we also have is a package to install a new hive as well today. There's a package of about 12 and a half, 13,000 bees, and they're going to be going into the, uh, a new hive today as well. Are they trapped in there at the moment? You got to open yep. the door of some sort? Yep. Okay. And when I open the door, they won't be happy. <laughs> so prepare to stand back. It'll be even more spectacular later this evening. Why well, will be spectacular spectacular later this evening? Because Woo. in a few weeks there'll be uh, another fifty percent more bees in the hive. So right now you got forty thousand. By the time they come up here, there'll be sixty thousand bees in the hive. Once They're again, I'm surrounded by bees. <laughs> the queen is not related to the bees in the package, so she's been raised separately because. Down south, where they've got where the bees are going strong, they might have hives with a hundred thousand bees in. They'll shake out and get five, four or five packages from a from a hive. They go in there and they've got lots of packages, but of course there's only one queen in the hive, and usually she's not been shaken into the package. So they need a new queen. So someone else's job was to raise a queen separately, and the queen's been out to mate, and then it's been put in a little cage. But the problem is, when the queen's not related to the bees in the hive, they would kill her if she was put straight in. So what we do is we put the queen in a separate cage. And so she has time for her scent to mix with the scent of the bees. This is a can of sugar syrup in order to feed the bees. Just those little pinholes there are all they need to get all the food to feed all these bees. The queen is in a little package here. All these bees are automatically going to know where home is. Well, they will stay pretty close. 
and they will get the idea pretty soon. They'll do a little orientation flight. They can smell the other bees, so they're going to stick together. But in here, if we look, we'll probably get the sun in there. I'll come, come around so the sun can shine in there. The queen is the larger bee here, the one there with the larger tail end. There's four or five attendant bees in there to look after her. But you see the larger bee there is the queen bee. And this is a slow release mechanism. So there's a cork here, which if you take that cork out, the bees would have to eat their way through this candy in order to let the queen out. And that buys her a couple more days of her scent mixing with the other bees. A lot of folks make the mistake of taking the cork out of this end, which would let the bee out, the queen out straight away. So normally, the, uh, if the package is just arrived, what you would do is take the cork out of this end. And it might help to have a nail, but I might be able to do it with my hive tool here. I'll introduce these bees. Introducing new bees to a hive. Okay, we'll just put that there and they'll find their way out. We don't have to wait for the queen in this particular case because we know the queen um, has been with them for long enough. So we're going to let the queen out. The way we're going to just let the queen out is very simply tear open the cage. We'll just come out of her own accord. There she is right there. Wow. Down she goes. Down she goes. That's her abdomen there. So just going straight down in the frames. How will you know if they accept her? Uh, we'll know if they accept her by the presence or absence of eggs in a few days' time. Okay. So it's a, a matter of judgment in terms of saying if they've accepted her, you can have eggs. If you were wrong, you don't, and you've got to get eggs from somewhere else so they could raise a new queen in that case. So you guys have had the tea? Yeah. The yes. cold version. Is this one for me? Yes, you can have Let's this try one. Let's try it. How'd you guys like it? Good. I okay. Like I do not like that kind. Yeah, lemonade. Refreshing. It is nice. It was hot in that bee suit. I bet. Oh wait, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I brought one in with me. Oh wait, I forgot to leave the bee out there. <laughs> wait, homemade blueberry muffin stew. Sure like you lucky dogs. Not give up. Go ahead, tell us how it is. Here you go. So let's get in. Let's go. Yay! Yeah. Good. What do you think, Mr. Brown? Four hours or something like that. I guess silence is a good review. That's right. You're shoving your faces. Here's your card. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, I'll leave that there for you. Beauty, what did you get here, babe? Um, so I got blueberry pie in a cup. Like, who is not gonna love that? Yeah. And blue mellow yellow tea and chaga blue tea. So they call chaga a forest herb, which I really liked and then I tasted it and it was absolutely delicious. So I'm pretty excited to get some good chaga in me. And then sprinkles. Like my we're in kids. competition with the high fructose sprinkle yeah. companies and we're gonna win. Yeah. We're no. totally gonna win. My the blueberries kids, are taking over. Folks. My kids want sprinkles, but I'm not gonna buy gross sprinkles. So I'm so excited about these. We got blueberry tea, blueberry bark, which you can like you make into tea or you can eat, which I'm really excited about. And then smoothie powder. 
Nice. Which is good for us because we don't have the freezer space for blueberries, yes. but we can put this in our smoothies. All organic. Yep. Highland Farm. Now, what everybody's dying to know now is do you ship? Yes. We okay. ship all over the world. Yes. So Yeah, I have a customer down in New Zealand that we ship what? our chips to. Okay, yes. so give give everybody your uh e or your website. Website is a taste of wildmain.com. Yes. Awesome people here. So I'm happy, very happy to promote her, obviously. We're ba we're buying this with our own money, so this is good stuff. You guys got to see this. We did not come here for the house, but when we came in here for the bathroom, I said, you got to let me feature this. Passive solar house. Haven't had an electric bill since November. Check it out. Thick windows, 18 inch insulation, massive Russian fireplace, only burning two cords of wood, a solarium, pretty much a room on the south side with lots of windows, collecting heat in the day. Banana trees, y'all. Out here, not only a beautiful south facing porch, south facing means that's where we're gonna have most of our sun, solar. That there is how they have not had an electric bill since November. This is Maine, this is the tundra. And this is why I'm so happy I created the member area, otherwise this video would be an hour long. I created a member video on this passive solar house for those of you who want more information. Check out the member area. The cart is currently open, but for a limited time, I'll leave more info down in the description. All right, goodbye everyone. Thank you so much Bye. for having us here. It's great. Thank you so much for the goodies. She's watering the bees, giving the bees water. Come on in. Thank you to you too. Goodbye. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Best of luck with the business. Yeah, thank you. Yay! <laughs> you got to come back and see my beaver dam, okay? Oh, Woo! Yeah. Oh, enjoy all those blueberries. We'll Bye. make sure you get so some thanks for coming. blueberries. You want some Bye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was great. Bye. Thank you. I like your kitty shirt. Thank you so much. We so really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. That. Like, really <laughs> appreciate it. And a complete bonus on our tour. Let me see how to say it. Penobscot Narrows Observatory. We didn't know about this until yesterday. But we're allowed to go way up there. Let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> what? Insane. Can you say insane? All right. <laughs> we hit number two. Number two. Have fun, guys. Thank you. Okay, when we open that up, we're going to be over 400 feet in the air. I believe you're going 500 smooth. feet a minute. It's so smooth. I'm not a big heights person. And this is the third tallest bridge observatory in the world. Yeah, and then it's the only one in the Western Hemisphere. It's going to be impressive. All right, let's wait for it. There's That's a big jump. There's only two. two floors, but they're like 400 feet apart. What? And 60 degree view. Oh my. Way down there. You're gonna stand right in the middle, huh? I, I prefer right. to be closer this is in. kind of crazy. As opposed to outside there. I'm okay though. Just don't make me stand too close to that. Alright, one, two, three.
It actually wasn't that bad. Once we got up to the top, I think it, what it was is those skinny hallways all around the edge. I don't know, it's just too much too soon. <laughs> We are at Elliot Coleman's Four Seasons Farm. He is why I even imagined to grow greens in the winter and I got my ideas for that in the low tunnel from Elliot. Let's get some breakfast. <laughs> it's somewhere under there. Look at that. Look at that. Woo! Breakfast. Look at this, compost under a greenhouse. Help keep it warm and dry. See that garden bed? There used to be a greenhouse over it. A big greenhouse, big mobile greenhouse. Huge compost pile there, surrounded by hay bales. To before, there's an after. They must have removed the bales and put them over there. And that's finished good. I really like that tool. Do you guys recognize that? Low tunnel. Right there. You recognize that, Lily? Yeah. Huh? Okay. This is a fabricated chick shaw. Watch out, dino in the loose. Oh, you pecked my toe. Pecked her toe. Oh, my toe. Okay, look. Look at that fleet of chick shawls. Nice. And there's a bunch of chickens in this greenhouse. I imagine they overwinter there. This has been really neat to see this. We called, they don't have time, I understand. It's spring, they must get a lot of visitors. But we were only an hour away, so we had to see it. I've read a couple of his books and implement a lot of his practices. The soil blocks, the overwintering and low tunnels, those kinds of things. I've learned about the winter hardy crops through Elliot. So what do you think? Was it a good visit? Oh, such a good visit. I am really thankful that we got to come here. We have read his books and we have like tried to envision this place and see and sometimes it's hard and pictures just don't do it and like a real life visit is what what you need and so I'm really thankful that we were so close that we could just come and stop in for a little bit. What an unbelievable day. This morning at the Blueberry Farm around lunchtime, that observatory tower, and then Elliot Coleman's farm? Are you serious? I think we can call it a day. Yeah.